when we're talking about probiotics, I know for myself, I would say, I mean, definitely for myself, I feel, I notice a difference when I'm taking probiotics on a regular basis. I just feel better. I feel more resilient. My gut feels more resilient. My immune system, I feel better in general. You know, years ago, I had irritable bowel, um, intermittent fasting, diet change, and probiotics were probably the three biggest things that, that moved the needle for me, as well as regular sun exposure, just sunbathing on a regular basis. So optimizing my vitamin D as well. So those are probably the biggest things that I noticed. And then as I got into practice using probiotics and it wasn't really, I wasn't doing it in a very scientific way. It was more of like, you know what, if I'm going to give this person three supplements, you know, based on their symptoms or questionnaire and this one lab test I have, what's going to make the biggest difference. And I would say time and again, probiotics was one of the, one of the probably probiotics and magnesium. I saw the biggest kind of needle movers for people as far as symptoms go. Um, and you know, again, it comes down to that immune modulating, that kind of gut microbiome balancing effect there. Now, what's interesting is in your book, uh, I know you've broken down probiotics into different categories and really helped us understand probiotics at a higher level. So let's talk about kind of breaking them down into these categories. Yeah, thank you. And, and I agree with your statement. I was a few years ago noticing that I still had some foods that wouldn't hit me right, especially if I, let's say I ate out and I had a couple glasses of wine. I would have, you know, a little bit looser bowels and I'd notice it. I, I, you know, it wasn't terrible, but I didn't feel highly resilient. And then when I got a good probiotic protocol on board, I'm still not bulletproof, right? I can't go out and have Mexican food and three beers yeah. and, and feel nothing, but I'd say I'm pretty darn resilient uh, as compared to, you know, before even like a glass of wine and eating out would be enough to notice something. And I think it's important for people to keep in mind, you know, we can use these tools to go from inflammatory bowel disease that's so bad your doctor wants to put you on some sort of biologic, yes, but at the other end of the spectrum, there can be these subtle, somewhat annoying symptoms, and it can be more of like an optimization play for some people. So I'm, I'm almost exactly with you there on all three of those things, the fasting, the sun, and, and the probiotics. Um, and then with this, uh, I call it my couch reading. I spend about an hour per night reading abstracts, and I get sent an abstract on a whole array of different studies. So anytime there's a study published on whatever topic, I get sent the, you know, the email and after reading through this for a while, there was this interesting evolution where at first, oh my goodness, this probiotic, the first of its kind, documented to improve constipation. That's the probiotic for constipation. Mm. Then three months later, hmm, different probiotic also helped constipation. Interesting. Well, which one do I use? I'm not really sure. And you see the same thing with depression, right? The, the first company to bring a formula to market that documented in a clinical trial, the ability to improve depression, pff, you know, they're going to put the word out there strong as I guess from a marketing perspective, you would expect them to. But then a few months later, different formula also helped depression. Now there's meta-analyses with different probiotics showing the ability to help depression, let's say. There's been comparative trials looking at different probiotics. Half the patients get the one formula, half the patient gets the other formula, same outcome of improvements in constipation. So if you take a meta view on probiotics, you see that different types of probiotics can all help the same condition. And if you keep reading, you see, oh, okay, there's different flavors. There's the Saccharomyces boulardii, that's the healthy fungus, trade name, biggest one out there is probably Floristore that you'll see over the counter. There's your traditional Lactobacillus bifidobacterium blends. This is your, your like your Visbiome or your VSL3. And this has the most research on it. This contains a mixing of different Lactobacillus and bifidobacterium species, somewhere usually between five or 15 different species. So that's the other flavor. And then the newer flavor is the soil-based probiotics where you'll see bacillus of various types, bacillus coagulans, bacillus subtilis, bacillus lichenformis, and some studies will use one, some will use two, some will use a different two, but as more and more research comes in, you see, huh, you know, the lactobacillus bifidobacterium probiotic has been shown a few times now to improve constipation. Mm, new study, soil-based probiotic, also improves constipation. So. Then you look at it on this meta level and you say, well, there's a bunch of studies that have found Saccharomyces boulardii can help condition one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Same thing's been documented for lactobacillus and bifidobacterium blends, and similar findings for the soil based. So maybe it's not about using probiotics like drugs, but rather trying to get these three different flavors into someone's system so we have the strongest and most diverse probiotic presentation into someone's gut that we can. And we call this probiotic triple therapy. We use this analogy of a stool like you'd sit on. One flavor is one leg, three flavors is three legs. Three is going to be more conducive to support mm. and balance. And we have seen this in the clinic where someone will see a you know, quasi improvement from one. And logic would suggest, well, if one is partially helpful, then three would probably be better. 